happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to your milk texturing and coffee recipes masterclass. My name is Georgia and I will be your host for this afternoon. Um, we are gonna be here for about 45 minutes this afternoon. But before we get into all that, let's wait for everyone to arrive. There's gonna be quite a lot of you today, more than we've ever had before, because clearly everyone wants to know about milk texturing and coffee recipes. So while we do wait for everyone to arrive, I'm just gonna make a quick coffee because, oh, I can't speak. Confession, I've actually not had one yet today, which feels a bit like a crime. Um, so I'm just gonna make a very, very quick coffee. Um, and yeah, while we wait for everyone to arrive, talk to you guys a little bit about the class, a little bit about what we're gonna be doing today. And yeah, let's, um, let's, let's do this. <laughs> nifty little carafe things here. So today, as you all know, I'm sure you've all booked on to the class, so I hope you know what you're in for. Um, but we're gonna be talking a little bit about milk texturing and coffee recipes. And if you are just arriving, do not panic. I'm just making a quick coffee while everyone arrives and settles down. So we are not focusing at all on the coffee today. Um, I would highly, highly recommend if you have not already, to go and watch our, or tune in, I suppose, to our regular Wednesday night masterclass, which is kind of a fundamentals of coffee masterclass. This is more your next step. Hopefully you've got kind of a half decent, I can't get that back in, so I'm just gonna leave it on the side. Um, hopefully you've got a half decent espresso. Um, and like I say, we are just focusing today on milk. We are not worrying about the coffee because we're going to be talking all about how to texture milk um, for different coffees right because the thing is when you first get a coffee machine you just kind of ooh, that is great job I actually didn't dial this in total confession um, one of our wonderful team behind the camera did shout out to you Tom because it's gorgeous um, but we are yeah when you first get a coffee machine you kind of just make everyone a coffee right you people come around do you want a coffee and a coffee is a coffee is whatever comes out of the machine but this is really more about learning the differences between your three kind of classic espresso based drinks so that is your flat white your latte and your cappuccino so we're going to talk about how they're built differently um, and how you texture the milk differently because the milk is such a massive part of what makes those drinks different as i said if you are just arriving please do not panic just making a quick coffee while we wait for everyone to settle in. Um, I also just want to kind of highlight there are a lot of you today, um, more than we are kind of we would we would usually have. Um, and so please do ask questions in the Q and A um, box. <laughs> I don't know what they next call it better than that, um, but. Please be patient. We have a couple of guys who are gonna be answering all of your questions, but I imagine there's going to be quite a few of them. And I would please urge you just to wait until the end of each section before you ask a question, because the likelihood is I will answer your question while you're typing it. So, some beautifully textured milk there. Pour this out and then we will get started with this afternoon's masterclass. I hope you're all settled in. Are you all on your lunch breaks, working from home? What are you doing? Um, and why have you chosen to spend Friday afternoon with us? Right, okay. Let's, we'll do a tiny bit. The other thing we're not focusing on is latte art, but I will be pouring some, but I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. Because we have another masterclass for that, and it's called Pour Your Heart Out Latte Art Masterclass. <laughs> okay. There we go, what can we do? I'm a little bit shaky today, so, okay. Oh God, it's a bit skew with. Gorge. It's fine, it's fine. As long as it tastes good, that is all that matters. Okay, Mr. Moderator, how are we looking on the numbers? Is everyone here, is everyone settled? And please introduce yourself so everyone knows who you are. Hello, hello from the moderation team. Um, yeah, everything's looking great. Amazing. So we have um, myself, Anthony, we have... Hello, I'm Tom. 
and we have uh, over, everyone's in, over 300. Gorge, okay, let's get started, shall we? Let me have a sip of this. Okay, thank you all for joining. Ooh, lovely, right, okay. I'll just sip on that throat. So let's talk a little bit about milk texturing. So I'm gonna break this down into a few different sections for you, which is why I urge you to please wait until the end of the section to ask your questions. So we're gonna focus first on just getting that milk texturing down. Um, we're gonna talk about alternative milks as well as dairy, so do not panic. And I will also be talking about how to texture your milk if you have a Barista Touch Oracle Touch Oracle with or Bambino Plus with those kind of automatic steam ones. Um, so I will highlight that, but obviously I have a Barista Pro here and we are going to be doing, man I personally am going to be manually steaming my milk. So we're gonna first focus on the actual milk texturing and then we will um, move on and talk about the drinks, what makes them each their own um, and how to texture the milk for that specific drink. The texture that I'm going to be going for in this first tutorial is kind of flat white latte territory. So it's just bog standard, kind of ideal for latte art if that's what you're going for. Um, and we'll do probably two cow, one alternative. <laughs> got no words. Okay, so I've got my jug. So the first thing that's really important, even if you have um, a automatic machine or a semi-automatic machine, is to purge the steam wand. So these steam ones um, have steam coming up <laughs> at 130 degrees. Um, so it's very, very hot. And basically what's happening when you're putting the steam into the milk, sorry, I'm losing the words, it's Friday. Um, what's happening there is you're breaking down the proteins and you're creating microfoam so you can get that beautiful silky texture that we associate with like a really good coffee. Um, you can, like the difference between this and like a milk frother, like a Arochino, Arochino or a um, handheld one, is you're not breaking down the protein. So there's an actual chemical reaction going in on, what am I trying to say? There's a chemical reaction going on here um, and that is how you create that microphone. So when you're doing it with like a milk frother, you're just creating air, you're just creating bubbles but this is a breakdown of the proteins to create microfoam. So I'm gonna start off by purging our steam wand. Again, I would advise to do this, even if you do have um, an Oracle Touch, Oracle Barista Touch, Bambino Plus, just for a couple of seconds. So what we want is this, loads of steam, nice and hot. Then turn it off and we're gonna put this in here. So you will notice I can do this with one hand because I am pulling on the steam wand. I do not want to see any of this business. Don't do that. You want to try and keep your steam wand and your jug as stable as you possibly can to reduce movement. Because the thing with this is that you're up and you're down and you're all around, right? And you have no control over the milk. You are in control of the milk. What you do here affects how it's gonna come out at the end. So when you put it in, one hand on the handle here, one hand on the side or the bottom whichever is more comfortable i alternate you can do a side bottom situation whatever works better for you there's no um right or wrong with that it's whatever's comfortable but one hand on the handle one hand on the side you're using your hand on the side for temperature so you're going to pop it in like this and again i can really pull on that if we could possibly get the top camera just so i can show them all what we are going to do here lovely thank you so much so start with it down here and you're gonna pull it out into the middle. So if we imagine this, we can break this up into like squares, it's round, <laughs> into quarters um, and kind of like a clock, right? So in the middle here, we're like the center of the clock. We wanna to go to about three o'clock here. And you always want the tip of the steam wand. You don't want it in like this. You wanna be able to just see the tip of the steam wand. Don't touch it, it's hot. <laughs> um, but you, the way I, I kind of best describe it is it's like surfing the surface of the milk. So I'm actually gonna just put some water in here just so you can kind of see, because it's a little bit harder with milk. But you're gonna pop this in here and then you just want to be able to, so there I'm submerged, you just wanna see the very tip, 
maybe it would have been easier with milk actually um, but you just want to see the very 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 tip of the steam wand the further out you are the more air you're going to add which is why if you go straight in like this and you submerge your steam wand straight away you will get that horrific horrific cat fox screaming sound and it's not nice um, if you hear that in a coffee shop run um, it just means you haven't added air to the milk you don't you want your milk to be nice and quiet it should sound like tearing paper first and then almost nothing at all almost silence you, you just hear the kind of chug of the machine um, that the reason you get that sound is because you've added enough air that you're muffling the sound of the air going into the milk right so that screaming sound means no air has been added um, and it's really important people tend to either go one way or the other when they're first starting out they will either add loads and loads and loads of air and you've got like cappuccino to the next level or they'll just do this and hold it there and let it scream until it's hot and then you just have like hot kind of bird milk okay should we texture some milk i think we should pop that back in there so with um automatic machines the only thing that applies to you there is purging the steam wand the automatic handles the rest of it for you you just need to be um changing the number per the drink but we will get to that in a little while okay so we're going to start out purge the steam wand when you first turn on your machine in the morning you will probably see water coming out of here um, it's like condensation and it gets stuck in the steam wand and we want to get rid of it Let's just give her a sec we want to get rid of it we don't want that going into our milk we're going to pull this oh, that's very hot pull this right out to the side and again at home i'd be here but because the coffee machine is in front of me and i am behind i'm pulling it right back so that i can texture it and then there's our middle oh sorry just pop on that top there we go i'm going about here if you can see that so and i'm I'm not up and down, I'm keeping this nice and stable. So, just purge that again. Because your steam wand will, things will go up the steam wand, so you just want to get rid of them. It's really important to purge off as well. Right, okay. Oh, that's very hot again. I've got to stop pulling that out so early. Right, here we go. That screaming sound, don't want that. We want here. Can you hear that tearing paper? We've got a nice whirlpool. That's the other thing we need to make sure that we have that constant movement. I'm just adding air, that texture, that tearing paper sign that you can hopefully hear um, is, is me adding air. So I can pull it out and you'll hear it much, much more. But we want to do this process for as long as possible where we're texturing the milk. The longer you texture your milk for, the more silky and glossy it will be. As soon as it's too hot to touch, please remove your hand and then let it go for another few seconds. With dairy milk, we want it to be about 65 degrees. 65 degrees is not only optimal drinking temperature, but it's also optimal um, microphone temperature. So when you start to go hotter than 65 degrees, what you will find is that your microphone breaks down. We had someone the other day, made them a coffee, and he said, but this is lukewarm. But the thing is, is that it was 65 degrees. So some people do want their coffee straight out of the volcano that's okay if that's how you like your coffee probably have an americano or you can make your milk hotter but just know you will not get this beautiful silky kind of like wet paint business you will get bubbles and it will start to break down but that's fine if that's how you want to drink your coffee please be my guest but you just won't get that beautiful silky milk so what we are looking for in the finished product no big bubbles if you have big bubbles one single tap if you do not have bubbles you do not need to tap um, more than one tap, maybe two, you're kind of like in a little bit of trouble and you've not quite textured it properly, but it's okay, it's always safe for. We want this nice texture, right, of wet paint is the best, like, you know, glossy paint straight out of the tin. That's the best kind of consistency that I can um, compare this to. Um, and the reason I'm doing this spinning motion, and you can see there, hopefully, that it's really coating the sides of the jug and I'm I'm not doing this or this I'm, I'm it's moving round and round and round and the reason for doing that is we want this to be one entity so you actually have two things in this jug you have microfoam and you have hot milk 
and I will let this sit to explain to you what happens when you don't mix your milk. We want this to be nice and homogenous and delicious and lovely so that we can pour beautiful latte art and have a consistent texture. If you let it sit, your foam will rise. It is less dense than this milk under, underneath here and it will rise. So you do not want to let it sit because if you can see, probably not, but it's gotten a little bit, there you go, thank you. Um, it's gotten thicker because the milk, the air has risen. So to prevent that from happening, we swirl, 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 swirl. And it also glosses the milk and it helps make it extra shiny. Okay, let's do it one more time. This time we will do oat milk. Which jug don't I want for this one? Okay, so here I have oat milk in a non-branded vessel. Um, you can use any alternative milk. What I'm going to teach you applies to any alternative. Um, please go for the barista edition and shake. I'm going to stir this up. Um, alternative milks, oat, oat milk is quite bad for it. Um, they do settle and you, you want, don't want that. You don't want it to settle. Um, the other thing is, because I'm going to forget to tell you, I am filling my jug about halfway. So I'm going to where the spout starts. So inside the jug, where the spout starts, about halfway, it's like a golden rule of thumb, doesn't matter what drink you're making, it kind of just always comes together. Um, if you've got small jugs, big jugs, it all applies, but just, just about halfway there. So, alternative milks are tricky to work with because they do not have protein in them. Oat milk is oats and water, and there's no protein really in oats, and that doesn't allow us the ability to make microfoam. So please go for barista additions, when you are purchasing any kind of alternative milk, it doesn't matter if it's soy, almond, pea, rice, there's loads of them. Just go for the barista edition, whatever you do, because it will make your life unbelievably, unsurmountably easier. Okay, we're going to treat this ever so slightly differently. We need to add slightly more air to this to make up for the fact that there's less protein, even in the barista edition. The other thing is that with alternative milks, you do not heat them to the same temperature. We're gonna to go to 55, not 65. Okay, there's our motion of adding the air. You can see those bubbles. And I'm just pulling down a little bit. So I'm going down the seam on there, making sure that tip, you can see the tip of the seam on. We've got gorgeous rotation there that's ensuring that our milk is evenly heated and evenly textured. If it's kind of staying still, if there's no movement, it's not going to be even. There we go. And that's that silence, right? You can just hear the chug, chug, chug of the machine. There's not really any noise coming from the milk itself. That's how you know you're doing a good job. Now, as soon as this is too hot to touch, which is there, I'm turning that off. We want beautiful oat milk we do not want porridge um, if you let it go hotter it will burn and it will start to break down unfortunately with alternative milks that is just the way i would definitely not recommend going any hotter than 55 degrees oh my god which this just so happens to be look at that you can't don't actually there you go can you see that temperature jug 55 spot on the money okay that, that's really made me quite happy actually. Um, okay, same thing though, right? This looks, I mean, this is settled now and it, they're slightly different colours, but if I move these and just give this a, oh, there's our, this is where you mix your milk. Okay, these look very similar, right? In fact, can you even tell which one is which? This is now settled, so it's obviously cow, but it's glossy, we've got no big bubbles and it's perfect texture. So it's just adding a tiny little bit more air into your oat milk. So let's say we do five seconds for cow, let's do seven seconds for oats, just to make up for the, the lack in protein. Um, and you'll get beautiful, beautiful, beautiful milk every single time. If you don't remember anything else I say, please do not heat your oat milk hotter than 25 degrees. You'll thank me for it. Um, I also want to give you a little tidbit because this is one of the most helpful things. I've heard many people be like, oh my God, I didn't know that, um, is please, for your Simond, this is a wet jade, jade cloth, jade cloth, jade cloth. I don't know. You can buy these in the supermarket in rolls. You can get them in Poundland. They're not expensive. You can buy them, uh, the blue ones in packs of 10. But this is what you need to clean your seam wand. You can use microfiber, but it's good to keep them separate because uh, 
uh, not eight mils, but milk does go foul and it smells and you don't want that in your coffee. So wet cloth, wipe it down straight away, straight away and then purge. As I said, the steam wand does kind of suck things up and we want to get those out of the steam wand to keep our steam wand nice and clean. If this is wet, it will change your life. If you try and do this with a dry cloth of any kind, you will be in tears. Okay. Now we've mastered milk texturing and we're happy and we're comfortable and we are confident, we are going to talk about the iconic, the wonderful flat white. So, flat white originated in Australia and New Zealand. There is still some debate. I'm a Kiwi, so New Zealand. But the flat white is a six to seven ounce drink. If you go to Australia, they'll say you can get a large one. I disagree. Here, you don't really get a large flat white unless you're in Costa, which kind of tells you all you need to know. Um, but you, a, a flat white is essentially six ounces. This is, I'm just giving a fair warning, this is bigger. This is an eight ounce cup. It, it should be six ounces to seven ounces, but this is an eight ounce cup. Um, and we do make flat whites in these. But the biggest thing with a flat white is about ratio, and it's also the ratio of milk to coffee, but it's also how you do the milk. A flat white should have like almost no texture at all. The reason I'm doing it in this cup, oh, there we go, um, just so you can see that that texture is, fingers crossed, right. Um, it should be a couple of millimeters. It should be really, really flat. Um, it's not meant to have loads of texture, but it should be kind of still nice and creamy. Um, so in a six ounce flat white, you have two ounces or 60 mils of coffee and then you have four ounces of milk technically you can't i guess oh this annoys me it's a conversation about ratios when it comes to a flat white i don't think you can get a large flat white but technically you can um this is an eight ounce cup right so technically if we wanted to make a proper flat white we would need to adjust our ratio of coffee to milk i'm just filling up the cup because i want to show you the texture of the milk this is really bothering me okay Let's make flat white, shall we? So, as I say, this is really flat milk. We do not want to add a lot of air in here to make a true flat white. Same thing, I'm filling my jug up to where the spout starts. I do this for every drink, doesn't matter. People have asked previously, how do I not waste milk? How do I not waste milk? It kind of is part and parcel. I've almost never made a coffee and had like the perfect amount of milk. If you have, God bless you tell me how. Um, there's almost always a bit of wastage, it just kind of comes with it. Um, that's, that's, that's all I can say on that really. Okay, let's make some coffee, make a flat white. Um, you may also find that we have these cups here, this is actually 200 mil, so it's 7 ounces. Um, a flat white is more like uh, 150 to 180. Um, but this cup here, we also do make flat whites in those. Apologies, we have a very important delivery arriving into our building as we speak. Um, a soundproof pod, would you believe? That's ironic, isn't it? Right, okay. Let's tamp this down, pop that in, and then we'll make a lovely, lovely, lovely flat white. Do you know what? I've not even got fine actually. Now that we're here, okay, move that away. Have a sip of this coffee. It's absolute carnage going on behind the scenes. I wish you could see it. Um, <laughs> okay, apologies for the uh, lack of change in angle. Our cameraman has just gone still. There she is. Thanks, Tom. Um, our cameraman is dealing with the uh, delivery. Okay, so that's how you know it's live. Keep you on your toes, guys. Beautiful, oh, here we go, shot of espresso there. Look at that golden brown. This is assembly from beans. That's all I'm going to say about the coffee, though. But gosh, it might because we love assembly. Okay, purging the steam on. Nice and hot. And then, tiny bit of air. That's that. You can see that there, like that push. That's me adding air in. We want this super flat. You, the best way I can describe how your milk as well should kind of look, sorry, that's my, my hair there. Um, <laughs> the best way this should look 
um, when you are texturing milk is that it should kind of look like the bubbles that you add, right, when you're adding your air, it kind of looks like they're being sucked up, up the steam wand. They're actually not. They're just being textured in tiny, 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 tiny bubbles. Um, but it, it should kind of look like that. Um, that's the, the best way I can describe that you're doing the right thing. It also allows you to know that you're getting rid of all the big bubbles. And then you'll have no, no bubbles left. Okay. Gorgioso. The other thing you can do, a little tip for you, um, is that you can, if you do mm, slightly texture your milk too much, you can just get rid of the top of it um, and it will be, see I've, I've overdone it just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, but you can get rid of the top and then your milk will be a little bit more flat. Okay, so it was just a tiny bit of air added, see even I still get it wrong. The flat white milk is quite hard to get like really, really, really perfect. Um, you'll kind of always end up doing something in between a latte and a flat white, but that's okay. Okay, give a little one of these. Oh, that's cute. There we go. Okay, so I hope you can see that. Beautiful gloss, firstly. That's a good sign. I'm just going to watch this. I really want to know if it's going to be right or not. It's probably a little bit too much and it's still settling, but then the glass isn't quite full. So really we would probably want just a tiny bit less foam than this. You probably can't see that because you're quite far away. Um, but we would want just like a tiny bit, but this is a pass. I would say this is a pass. If, if I serve this, that would be a flat white because it's not quite so thick, but it's a latte. So it's pass. We did it together team, well done. Okay, let's do, what's the time? Should we do one more? Oh. Let's do one more. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a, a little bit of a long time here, but that's okay. We're all in this together. Um, oh, that's very hard to get over. Oh my God. Right. Clean your pot filters down. Okay, so we'll do... Oh, see. <laughs> I've lost my head today, guys. It truly is a Friday, that's for sure. Right, pop that in there. And what I would love to know, and I hate to make my team any busier, but is anyone doing this along with us? Just like a yes. I think they are doing it along with us. Okay, love that. Let us know at the end. Just pop a question. You can pop a question in because I don't think the chat's open. Um, and just let us know if you found it helpful. Did you learn anything? Are you feeling great? Was it rubbish? <laughs> um, let me know. I'd really love to know at the end. Don't give me your thoughts now. There's two still two drinks to go. Um, but I would love to know your, your thoughts because this is the first time we've ever done this masterclass. It's a debut, if you will. Um, and the reason that we're doing this masterclass is because people asked for it. So I would just love to know if you found it helpful, if you've had a great time, if you've enjoyed yourself. Um, and then I can go and tell everyone that you all hopefully loved it. Um, and then we'll do more and more and more of them um, for, for other people. Okay, let's do another flat white. Pop that in there. Yeah, I definitely think that's a flat white. Oh, lovely. Alrighty, hosen. Pardon me, a little bit. I'm going to try this one actually. This is nice, it's fresh. I let my other one sit, I was too busy chatting. Delish. Okay, let's move that. Another beautiful shot of espresso. Thank you, Tom. Move that out of the way. And then, let's texture some milk. Okay, so we'll add a little bit less air this time. Just sinking my steam on a tiny bit, I can still see the tip of it. The tip of it is not, well, it's slightly submerged. Um, but you really want to, for the most part, be able to see the tip of that steam on in the movement of the milk. Um, that's how you know you're in, in about the right place. If you're happy with the texture and everything and you just want to finish heating it, you can sink it a little bit, um, but you don't. Okie cokey. Turn her off. Wipe down immediately. Get a 
get it in there. Make sure you get the bottom as well, especially if you have the Barista Pro, get the bottom. I have one at home and I don't do it all the time. Right, there we go. And then purge it. You just want to see that liquid leave steam on. Okay, this is better. This is better. This is more like it. Right, let's do this. Just get rid of this one. Oh, God, I'm running out of vessels. In there it goes. Okay. I was expecting to do this many stacks. Go on, one more. One more. Oh, a bit wonky on the end. That's cute, but that texture, far better. So it's just a little bit thinner. Um, you can still do glorious latte art. Ironically, the latte art was actually created for the flat white and not for the latte at all. Um, but this texture is, is much better. It's slightly thinner. That's why I wanted to show you in a glass, actually here just so that you can see that there it's really thin I hate you can see it anyway um, but it's really 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 thin um, a lovely flat white okay let's move on shall we God, that is a very pretty I'm, I'm quite happy with that let's talk latte the latte the love of my life so lattes these about 10 ounces and what you want is about just over a finger width of foam. You should be able to scoop it with a spoon, but not in the same way as a cappuccino. It shouldn't have that like super thickness to it. You should still be able to scoop it with a spoon. 10 ounces traditionally, so you have eight ounces of milk. That's 300 mils, by the way, just thereabouts. Um, if you're looking to buy like particular cups, 300 mils for a latte. You can make it as big as you want. If you want to do it in your sports, sports direct mug, by all means go ahead. Um, it will be a very large latte. You probably want four shots for that. Um, but it's it's this. It's your it's your mug. Um, it's your bowl of coffee, I suppose. But a good latte is eight ounces of milk, just like a finger. I obviously can't show you this because it's not a glass, but just over kind of a finger a finger width of foam. So we're going to add a little bit more air into our milk, um, and both of these cups would suffice for a latte. I actually don't know the true size of either of these but they are latte cups Th this is like this is fine for a latte okay Kofi. should we do oat milk let's do some oat milk I've been, I've been doing too much cow right so same thing I'm gonna do a double shot all of these drinks apart from the cappuccino but that's why it's at the end um is a double shot of espresso that is your base 60 mils 45 grams however you're um, measuring it, um, but they are all based with a double espresso. Technically, it is a ratio-based game, so if you want to make them bigger, um, I'm going away from my, you can't have a large fat white, you, you technically can, but if you want to make them bigger, um, you need to adjust the amount of coffee, so if you would like a giant latte of 600 mils, you would need four shots of espresso. Okie cokey. Now I'm going to use the brown mug because it's my favourite mug possibly in the world. Do you ever get that where you just have like, you just love a mug, you know? I've always loved mugs. <laughs> Going on a tangent now, sorry. But it's true, I've, oh, gosh. Um, no, I've always loved mugs. I'm a bit of like a mug collector and this mug sings to me. And it's perfect for a latte or a mocha actually. For a different drink a mocha should be the same size as a latte but with delicious chocolatey goodness gorgeous okay what i'm going to do now is throw you all off and introduce a bigger jug you actually do not need i and i tell you this because i make lattes with let's do this over here while we're on this camera um i make lattes in this very mug with this exact jug all of the time but just to show you that you can get bigger jugs this is not a sage one, it's from Amazon. Um, but you can get bigger jugs if you're using a bigger mug. You may find it easier to have the right amount of liquid, etc. And this one very um, kindly has the measurements on the side. It's very nice. Um, Okie okay, Let's steam some. So we are doing this with oat milk. So I'm going to add more air than I would if I was doing this with cow's milk. Because why? We have more air when we do oat milk to make up for the lack of protein. So, 
Mm, should have added more milk in from the jug, but it's going to add in quite a lot of air because, like I say, this is oat milk and we do need to adjust the amount of air that we add um, because it's oat milk. So, there's our beautiful rotation. We've got tear and taper. And it kind of looks like the bubbles are being sucked up the steam wand. I hope you can see that. Lovely rotation. It's all of a sudden very warm in here. Um, I think it's just because I'm standing by a steam wand. Um, but we are going to let this go until when? It's too hot to touch. Okay. The other thing you can do, now this is getting complex, but um, if you have friends around, family around, or maybe it's just you and you want two coffees, or you and your partner, or you and your dog. Um, you can use bigger jugs to make like a cappuccino and a flat white, but I won't go into that, but you can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I should say on the matter. Otherwise, I'm gonna overcomplicate things. So, here's our milk, nice and glossy. Um, one thing you can do as well with oat milk, uh, I didn't do it this time, but you can do it, is um, just let it sit, let it sit, I know this is going against everything that I said to you about cow's milk, but we are talking about oats. Let it sit for 30 seconds. So what you can do is have your shot ready to go in the machine, do your milk first, and then press that button as soon as you're done, and just let it sit. And what you will notice is that it just thickens up ever so slightly because the air is rising and it thickens the milk up nicely. Um, some people would disagree, but that tip really changed my life with oat milk um, because it can be a little bit more finickety to texture um, but the biggest thing like I say is just adding more air okay so a lovely latte there we go Ooh. Oh, I was kind of going for a rosetta but it was it was almost there, but it, she's slightly wonky. That's okay, it happens. Okay, so a latte is how big, folks? 10 ounces. Um, you have slightly thicker milk. You should be able, I don't have a spoon here, but that's fine. You should be able to kind of scoop it with a, a spoon. It should be nice and creamy, and it should have a slight different mouthfeel to a flat white. A flat white will feel very flat. Creamy, but very flat. This will feel, Let's try it. Oh, sorry, <laughs> went out of focus for a second there. You've got like a bit more cream, a little bit more foaminess, a little bit more deliciousness. Um, so it's just slightly thicker. Right, that's the latte. A latte really is probably what you're mostly making for people when they come round and going, can I have coffee? And then you give it to them in a mug. The other thing is, if you want, uh, the reason I have those two, these two mugs, um, if you do want to do any kind of latte art, do it in one like this and not in like a tea mug, like a taller one. You will really struggle to do latte art in those because you tend to run out of milk before you can get close enough to do the latte art. So something wider is, is better. Okay, the cappuccino. Let's talk because people are going to get angry with me here. A cappuccino should not have latte art on it. All right? Should not. A cappuccino traditionally, traditionally, is one shot and it's like your after dinner, your after lunch, your like dessert coffee. And it's traditionally one shot. We do it two, most places do it two, like as in a double shot. <laughs> um, but it should not have latte art on it. And I stand firm on this because people will say, it should have latte on it. I'm looking at you, Australia. It should not have latte on it. <laughs> feel very passionately about this. A cappuccino should have that beautiful white dome. It should look like the, I don't know, I'm struggling here. The moon, the moon. It should look like the moon. Um, it can be quite, I, I sometimes get it and I sometimes don't, um, to get it look exactly right so you should have like a ring of brown and then all white in the middle um let's see if i can do it a cappuccino is one third coffee one third milk one third foam lots of foam 
It should be thick, it should be luscious, it should have chocolate on it. It should be an enjoyable experience for all. Um, as I say, it is traditionally, like if we're going proper, proper traditional, it's one shot, um, but you will mostly find it served with two, unless you are in Italy. Um, I am going to do cow's milk for this, because to this day, I cannot do an oat milk cappuccino. My lovely colleague who used to work here, Keone, mwah, love you, you're the best, always used to test me and ask me for an oat milk cappuccino. And I could not once do it for him. And I won't touch it ever since, so I just stick with my cow's milk. <laughs> um, but you would just add loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of air into oat milk. So we are going to add loads and loads of air. Here we go. That steam one is out. It is fully out. Okay, you can see that. We've got bubbles on bubbles on bubbles. This is what we want. We want a big increase in volume here because we are adding lots of air into our milk. But principles still apply. No big bubbles. It should be glossy. It should be still nice and smooth. We do not want big bubbles. That is not nice milk. So I just added in basically loads of air at the start and now I'm texturing it so that it is nice and glossy and silky and smooth. And then I'm going to try and do the pour, but I really struggle with it. Um, I sometimes get it, sometimes don't. Uh, that is our, I hope you can tell how much that actually increased in volume. It probably went up. So we started here. This is how much milk we poured in here and it's up here. So it's increased this much. That's a lot of air. That's good. That's what we want. We want a nice thick cappuccino and we want a cup about this size. Cappuccino, again, it's like six to eight ounces. Um, one third milk, one third coffee, one third foam. Can she do it? Okay, so for this, this is important because this is how it should look. You just need to pour it, okay? You can do it off the, should we do it off the side? Off the side is like a hack. No, she's ugly, I didn't do it. <laughs> and I've spilled it everywhere. Okay, don't do it off the side. Um, <laughs> but um, it, it should be, you just basically want to go for it. So when you pour it, it's literally just bang. So that you get, because the thing is, when you pour quickly with the tip close into the milk, you will get that foam. We want that white, so it's thick and it's frothy. And it should, which this somehow does, have a little dome to it. Think Guinness, think domage. You know, you get that nice little dome on a Guinness. We want the same thing here. So, it's kind of ugly, but it's kind of cute. And then a little bit of chocolate, like a little dusting of cocoa powder, and that is a win. Okay, that's it, that's it. But what we are gonna do very, very quickly because we are coming to the end of our time here. Oh, I was literally right on time, that's great. Um, we're gonna do a quick little q and A. I'm gonna get the guys to pick like five questions because judging by the way they've been typing like maniacs, I think there's quite a lot of questions that have come in. So pick five questions, interesting questions. You can put your questions in now if you want to. Um, or if you've seen some that have come through, um, ask me a question. Is there something I haven't covered? Is there something that you want to know? Are you stuck on something? Ask now. While you ask, I'm going to tell you that we do a few other masterclasses. So as I said, hopefully you have watched the fundamentals of um, espresso. It's called the Sage Appliances Live Home Coffee Masterclass. And that is like your true unboxing. If you haven't watch that and you've come straight here please go and watch that it will help a lot oh, i've got hiccups I'm just have a sip of water um it will help you a lot it's about kind of really dialing in and getting like a, a really half decent espresso when you're new to coffee and the other one is our pour your heart out latte art masterclass so as you will notice i did not talk about coffee and i didn't really talk about latte art um that is the kind of first step so it teaches you how to pour a heart um, and that is the first step on your like espresso latte art journey where you just a heart is like the fundamental base of everything um, So do check that out if you want some help with your latte art. Okay. Have we got have we got questions? Got any questions? We do. Okay. Hit me with the first one. Yeah, we've got some, we've got some good ones here. Mm -hmm. um, so firstly um, Quite a few people have asked if you could 
briefly summarise again the ratios on a flat white? Of course I can. A flat white, six ounces, okay? So it should be two ounces of coffee, 60 mils, 45 grams, but 60 mils of coffee, a double shot of espresso, and then four ounces of milk. It's actually technically, it's like three ounces of milk, one ounce of foam, or it's like three and a half, and you, that's why you have that tiny little bit of foam. Um, but the, don't worry about the foam aspect, because you're just gonna do it really, really nice and thin like this. Um, you just want two ounces of coffee, four ounces of milk. And then someone's asked, can you just texture for one cup or can you texture for two cups? You can texture for two cups. If you're gonna texture for two cups, go along and get yourself this non-brand, I don't know what this is, literally from Amazon. Get yourself a big jug. I'm not gonna lie, it's not easy to texture for two cups especially if you're trying to make two flat whites or like two of the same drink, it's a lot easier to, to texture for a cappuccino and then a flat white because what you're gonna do is just add in loads of air, pour your cappuccino first and then what you should be left with is like perfect flat white milk because you've gotten rid of all your foams in the cappuccino. Um, it's very difficult though to texture for two flat whites, I'm not gonna lie, because you're, you will need to add more air but then you'll probably end up with like two lattes, not two flat whites, um, so I would, usually recommend texturing differently or separately unless you're doing a cappuccino and a flat white or a cappuccino and a latte um and get a big jug you won't be able to do that in like a normal jug you would need a big, a big jug this is a 20 ounce this is a 580 ml jug maybe even bigger than this this would probably yeah this would probably do like a cappuccino and a, a proper six ounce flat white this is an eight ounce but um you would need a big jug for that a couple of uh, quick ones as well. Stuart's yeah. asking about how to do latte art. So obviously you've got a latte art masterclass you can join that you're hosting. Absolutely, Stuart. It's on the 26th of May. And then I think we've got one on the 6th of June, possibly, if I'm correct, maybe. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's really like the basics, basics, basics of how to pour a heart. You will watch me, or if it's someone else, basically pour a heart like 17 times over. But a heart is the fundamental thing that you need to know to do any kind of latte art. It will go into all of your patterns. Um, it's about 40 minutes, and again, it's not about coffee, it's just latte art. And then Doug's asking why we tap the milk jug on the table. Great question. Just to get rid of any air bubbles, um, I briefly, briefly covered this <laughs> earlier. Um, so, if you have loads and loads of air bubbles, tapping your milk will not save you. Like, if you've got families in there, it's not going to save you. If you've got, like, one or two, you're fresh out of steam one, you've got one or two, a light, and I'm not talking, don't bang it on the table, just a light tap, kind of like you would when you bake a cake. And you bake a cake and you want to get all the air to rise to the surface, um, so you can pop the bubbles, same thing. Just a light tap. Really, you should only need to tap once, twice if you have to. If you have to do more than that, it's still fine, like your milk will be fine, but it's just more, it's just now I know for next time, okay, I need to texture this more so I can get rid of those bubbles, because you shouldn't have any bubbles. In a perfect world, when it comes out of the steam wand, you should not need to tap. I would like to reiterate also, you don't need to tap. If you've got no air bubbles, you don't need to tap. I do see it often. Um, if there's no air bubbles, don't worry, just swirl. Um, yeah, and then people are asking about sort of skimmed and semi-skimmed and whole. Oh. Yeah, great question. So, questions, I suppose. Um, so, this milk here in this carafe is semi skimmed Cravendale. Um, nothing about the brand specifically, but it's filtered milk. Um, the reason that we use filtered milk here is because it's unaffected by seasonal change. So, the fats and the things, it's, it's very like this on a line. Whereas regular milk will kind of go a little bit like this in terms of like the fats and the proteins and sugars and all of those things that are in milk. Um, you don't need two sorts of milk at home. I buy it sometimes. Sometimes I go to the garage across the road and I just buy whatever's there. Um, it's easier to do filtered milk, but you don't have to. Um, whole milk, blue full fat milk is the easiest to texture, has the most amount of protein, sugars, etc. Um, it's the easiest thing to texture, so if you are practicing, do that. The other thing I didn't mention, sorry, 
um, is that if you want to practice texturing your milk and you don't want to waste milk, it's expensive, the point of course he lives. Um, that was, yeah, anyway. Um, water and a drop of dish soap. And it will get, don't drink, <laughs> but it will get you a very similar consistency. Um, and so that way you can practice without wasting loads of milk and coffee, etc. You can also use dark soy sauce in place of espresso to practice latte art. Yes, you can. It's a good combo. Don't taste it. Um, but it, it, it helps. Um, you know, it's not good to waste things, she says. Um, but, and it, it, like, the only way you'll get better at milk texturing is practice. We've I've made loads of coffees in here, and, like, baristas make 300 coffees a day. So it is about practicing, so it's a really good way. And don't worry about soap and stuff going up your steam one, it's all good, just make sure you purge it. A lot of people are asking about the, uh, the auto option for doing that and that, mm. and on our Oracle Touch and Barista Touch. I forgot to tell you, didn't I? <laughs> silly, silly, silly me. Okay, so listen in. You do have presets on the Barista Touch and the Oracle Touch. Those presets have the like optimal amount of foam, so you have your scale from like one to eight, one to nine, depending on the machine. Um, or one to three if you have Bambino Plus. Um, and on the Barista Touch and the Oracle Touch, those presets are the most optimal amount of foam for that specific drink. On the Barista Touch, I think it's a four. Personally, I would turn it down to a three for a flat white. Otherwise, you literally just need to go with what it says because they were designed by very, very, very clever engineers who basically said this is the right amount of foam for this drink you can definitely whack it up like if you really like a thick cappuccino just whack it right up to the top um but go with the preset if you have um an oracle or a bambino uh, bambino plus on a bambino plus you have three frost settings so you basically have like hot milk flat white cappuccino or it's like latte cappuccino it doesn't quite go like as foamy um, I, would, I just as a rule of thumb go for the middle one works best um, on an oracle it's a little bit harder to say because you have I haven't got one here um, you have the little notches so it's slightly harder um, but it's still the same thing so like about four notches for a flat white about five to six notches for a latte and then whack it up to the top for a cappuccino sorry that was very long winded <laughs> I think that's about all we have time for today, question-wise. Perfect. Okay, amazing. Thank you so, so much for joining us. If you could, I would absolutely love it if you can just pop in the Q&A um, box. If you've enjoyed this, if you find it helpful, if you have any feedback, we'll leave it open for like two minutes or something just so that you can pop your um, response in. Um, but thank you so much for joining me, spending your lunch with me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I really hope you find this helpful. And I shall see you again very soon. Have a lovely weekend and a lovely rest of your day.